Six months ago, we set out to transform a Mercedes Sprinter into our very own Golf Tour Bus, which you will have seen in some of the recent videos. And we thought you might like to see how we transform this into this. Oh, and a word of warning, there is no golf featured in this video. considering a van build and don't have a garage like we do be prepared to have this kind of thing going on power tools being charged on the table wood paneling in the corner of the kitchen we're okay with it but someone in the household isn't let me show you another piece in the hallway a bit of wood framing anyway let's crack on and see what we're doing in today's or this week's episode time is it's where we start the day with our breakfast and Penny sits on my knee while eating. You happy there Pen? There's a horrible little spider just hid behind my mirror. If Hannah there he comes he's just come out. If Hannah sees that she'll have a heart attack. He's not very nice is he? Where is he? There he is. Climbs in behind the mirror. There you go. Just to demonstrate. So we're going on a trip out today to uh, Bromborough to a shop that sells all things campervan, really, isn't it? Yeah. Um, we thought it would be nice to go and see things in the flesh rather than just buying them online. So we're going to look at things like a sink, uh, a hob, water heaters, water heaters, heaters. gas bottles, yeah. the lot. So it should be quite exciting. I don't know what, what we'll end up buying. Well, I think it's just quite nice that we're doing interior bits because all we've done so far is the foundation, which alone has been, you know, it just has just been a long haul, hasn't it? Yeah. Now to put some bits in the like working bits inside, mm -hmm. you feel like you get somewhere with the van. So yeah, and it's our first real. Seems like our first trip out in the van. Yeah, but it's not. No, it's not. The van's actually done hundreds of miles. It's been all over Scotland in the last two or three months, where we kept uh, darting off and doing work. It's been all over Scotland. It's been on ferry boats. It's been up to the Isles of Scotland, but. In terms of the channel, we haven't really been very far yet, have we? It's a shame it hasn't been finished because it would have been used an awful lot in these last couple of months. That would but be great. Can't wait. It'll definitely get used a lot when it's done anyway. What you might have there. I can see one, I don't know what it is. Yeah. 
So we were trying to get like a corner unit. I didn't think you could get them in a, in a pub. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Three burners as well. Mm-hmm. And then that would be our sort of sink unit. Yeah. Which again is quite deep, isn't it? Mm-hmm. But again, not taking up the load of space. Right? Yeah. So it's really quiet in there and we haven't really filmed much um, but we're just measuring up now to see if the sink and the hob that we like will fit where we want them so fingers crossed. So we've actually made some purchases which we weren't quite expecting so we're just waiting to pick them up now. Here they come. So we're just heading back now, but we've bought a heater and a fridge. How do you feel? A little bit sick because it was, um, well the heater was, I was ne weren't 100% we were even having a heater in. I suppose it sounds a bit daft, but unsure on the heater. So that was, um, yeah, a bit, bit of an expensive one. And the fridge, again, <laughs> yeah, a little bit more than we wanted to pay, but there you go. But well, no, they look good. Well, you went for a look around. And obviously it wouldn't be a trip out in the van without McDonald's. And it was me this time. That, um... It's you every time. What do you mean this <laughs> time? To be fair. Right, we're just unboxing our first purchase, which is our heater, which is what? What's it called? Propex Heat Source HS2000. And basically you could, you could choose a diesel heater, which many people fit. And again, I think a quite a cost effective way of doing it. Um, this thing is uh, going to be, we're going to use our LPG gas bottle, which will be uh, where we get our energy source for our um, our cooker, our burns rather, um, and our hobs, three goes about it that. And now we can also power this heater as well. That's the plan, it's going to fit underneath the kitchen units and we're going to install that before we do anything else and move any further forward. But there's a lot of cabling and uh, Scary, okay. I'll leave you with that. Great. I want to know how big it is in terms of how, or how tall it is. It's got them little doodars on. Have they got to go both to the outside? Have they? Panic mode. <coughs> Pen, what are you barking at? <coughs> Pen. You gonna stop now? Han? Yeah. We're open our next. They've got to say that after our first um, excitement of opening the heater, it's dampened a little bit because it's a bit more complicated than we first thought. A little bit. Second unboxing of the day. Away you go. This can be stressful, you know. <laughs> you bet scissors. Ooh, liking the look of this. Nice. Liking it? Yeah. Penny, be quiet, please. We'll put a bent in this side. So it, it fits perfect. Penny. God, that dog. Missy, Missy. No. No, come here. Miss, come and see. What's it? What is it? Got a fridge. You've got a fridge. What do you think? What do you think? Doesn't fit. No. Just joking. Yeah, we've got some positivity at last. The fridge fits perfect. And uh, it looks really good as well. It does. Doesn't it? Yeah. So it's a Dometic fridge and it's a 65 litre 12 volt. And this is what it looks like. We're too scared to take the wrapper off yet, just in case it gets scratched, but it fits perfect. So at least that's one one yeah. good thing bought. The other interesting thing with it is the um which is there's a detachable freezer compartment and I don't think we'll use the freezer, so it makes the obviously the fridge part that bit bigger, but that's quite clever in terms of uh, that particular fridge type. And see the two cables on the back, Anna? I think, and again, as you know, we're no experts, but it's 12 volt fridge, just them two cables connected to our current cable we've got in place, back up to our little power generator, which is in place actually down there now, and yep. in this cupboard. Um, 
that should be it up and running and then we'll do some feedback on how long it lasts based on our sort of full charge uh, how many days will be out there for but yeah like that far more than I do well I like this thing you've seen the heater that's the heater mm -hmm. that we were referring to earlier uh, it's going to sit underneath the unit it's just not so much complications but drilling holes in the floor I'm not too keen on so those two um, have to be drilled into the floor that's where it sits mm -hmm. and then uh, you've got to copper pipe it back to your gas there's no flexi pipe being used you've got to use uh, gas fittings so that sits in there gas fittings copper pipe back to our um, yeah. gas bottle which will be there mm -hmm. and we haven't even got to the point really where you've already seen the kitchen in situ so we better get back to where this video was supposed to be about was how we're going to put this or fix our kitchen and our uh, B&Q carcasses it carcasses in place so as per usual we've not gone according to plan today um, we were planning on properly fitting the kitchen but as we ended up buying the heater in the fridge we've now gone off track been back to being q and we've decided to properly fit the fridge into the cupboard yeah well it was to see if it fits that's what i'm saying the whole thing i think through every episode you kind of like go five steps forward in terms of your planning but then you have to keep coming backwards and uh reinventing everything so it was no good buying a fridge unless it fit into this housing unit here mm -hmm. so we've been like han just said we've been back to being cute bought a housing unit and a drawer to see if this works so fingers crossed and that's another thing we do quite a lot on these videos yeah that it all works isn't it professional as ever there's our diagram we're going off confident that always as always Again? Okay, another moment of truth. Are you ready? Does it fit? Go on. I think I think it will. Oh wow. That'll be good, won't it? Perfect. I think so, yeah. I think perfect. It's a lovely blend. A little tiny <laughs> chip on that corner, but mm. um other than that. I'll fix that. That's really good. So it's now the next day and yesterday just did not go according to plan at all. Um, we finished fitting the fridge into the unit and then we called it a day and decided that today we would go with the original plan and try and fit the kitchen properly. So that's the plan. Hopefully today we actually stick to it. So the reason for doing the B&Q carcasses was because... Penny never shuts up, you know, in this driveway. The reason for doing the being... Oh my God almighty. Shouting. I'll try again. The reason for doing the B&Q carcasses was because basically I don't have any great joinery skills and I certainly in terms of being able to build the cabinets, watching people do it. We'd have probably got there in the end, but it just seemed a really simplistic way of uh, cheating, I suppose. And uh, they're really strongly built. I think they're, 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 and they're good value as well. They don't cost a lot of money. So for me, the kind of time versus the costing, it was a no brainer to go down this route. Maybe not for everybody, but like I said, if you're not the best, at joinery and you're a little bit fearful of putting those cabinets together then for me this is a great way of doing it and all I'm doing now is building a very simple base unit to stick on the bottom which is what I'm cutting up down here and then we'll secure them into the van so they're all done all units are put together build these kind of uh, these things down here where are we on the bottom and then I've got something just to secure down onto the bottom of the van and then keep a little bit of strength so we're doing it under the bits where the gas bottle is under where the fridge is and I did it where our electrical supply unit is so where there's a bit of weight we just built those extra bit of support underneath now another thing in terms of being idiot proof uh, just to get making sure you get a right angle on all of your joins I bought this little tool which is from screw fix it was a tenner and basically I can't do it with the whilst holding the camera but you kind of hold them two pieces get them in place and then you tighten this and like I said if I had another free hand, I'd show you properly. You tighten that, and once they're secure, they're in a perfect right angle, and it allows you then to screw them both together, knowing you've got everything perfectly square, which I think, again, 
is a really good kind of no-brainer tool for a tenor that saves uh, a lot of cock-ups. If you've seen when we first started uh, with the van build, we left half of the uh, bulkhead in because it was a really good support and we thought it was quite good to fix our kitchen to. So we've just added a piece of wood behind there, we're adding another piece of wood at the back of the kitchen unit just to secure it at the top and then we're going to fix them with the, the base units that my dad's made to fix them to the floor as well so they could they, they should be quite solid. So the time has finally come where we're going to properly fit the kitchen and I'm sure you've seen throughout all our videos that the kitchen has been coming in and out uh, throughout this whole process but I think it was well our first week really wasn't it of, of building the van we wanted to know if we could build the kitchen out of what would you I like pre-built really? carcasses, yeah. so stuff that we use being q so it's mm -hmm. a pre-built body. Um, as I understand, people don't use them because they can be a bit heavy, um, but based on the build we were putting together, we were least, less worried about the weight of it. But mm -hmm. uh, So we built them early on. We got on. one to start off, didn't we, just, yeah. just to try. Yeah. Um, and then we decided to just buy the whole setup, yeah. put it in, and see if it worked. Yeah, and then the, the whole van, if I'm honest with you, has been built based on or the design of the van has then been built based on the back of the kitchen and how that kind of worked and fit because it's all our storage it's obviously where we're going to wash and uh, cook and the fridge is in there as well so the bulk of the stuff was going into that area so we built that but then we kept taking it out to do bits which was a bit of a pain in the backside but it worked for us so today we're going to fit the carcasses what we've done we've built them all but i'm going to secure them to the uh, the, the base of the uh, van and I'll show you how I've done that. It's only going to be a couple of places just to get them ultra secure, secure to the floor, and then we'll secure them into the walls. And then hopefully uh, that works, I mm. suppose. We'll soon find out. We've done, I say we'll soon find out. We've done one. This one was done uh, a week or so ago. It's a standalone unit, and that seems pretty solid. Reasonably happy with the way that has gone. So now we've just got to fit that big L shaped bit. And uh, like I said, hopefully it works. <laughs> juice because and a pork pie we've had a good two days really it's very rare that we've had uh, two consecutive days to work on summer and it really does help to get stuck into stuff are you happy so happy yeah well, got loads done yeah feels like it's come on loads yeah that's in the, the big last deal days. yeah and it, even like little jobs that we haven't finished that we've managed to finish yeah. it's made a massive difference yeah no it's been so good i mean we even had, and we haven't filmed it or shown it in this, we'll maybe show it a bit later on, is that the, the gas uh, engineer came round and did a bit of work. So our pipe work is through in terms of that back cabinet ready as sort of a first fix. So everything's gone so well this last couple of days. And uh, what you've just seen us doing is securing in the kitchen. It's absolutely rock solid. And a couple of brackets to put, L brackets to secure those frames to the floor. And then that's it done. We can start to next plan for next week's video is Thing, sink yeah. and hard, isn't it? Sink and hard. We just yeah. get work top in it. I'm work top, yeah. Got to yeah. find some work top to sort mm -hmm. out, and if we get that, then sink and hob can go in. Yeah. And then it's the kind of water system, and we're really sort of motoring along. Our plan, by the way, is to finish all that back end in terms of the kitchen, water, uh, cooker, yeah, fridge, mm -hmm. and then we're going to finish off down this back end. So that's it, as ever, uh, thank you for watching and uh, I think at this point we ask you to like it and all them things and yep. give us some feedback about what we've done, if there's bits that we've done wrong that you think we should have done differently then by all, <laughs> yeah, by all means stick it in the comments below but uh, more importantly like I said thanks for watching and we'll see you next Sunday. <laughs>